everyone, the Lone Wolf here. Welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in Eve Online. Now, I would have liked to join the test of the new server hardware yesterday. Unfortunately, it was like uh, one or two hours earlier than the normal mass test, and I was still at work, so uh, I couldn't join that. Um, but looks to me like people had a lot of fun because everyone had max skills. I saw a lot of. Uh, I actually saw a screenshot of like a lot of titans and uh, a lot of wrecks around Cheetah, so it definitely looked like uh, people did enjoy it and it was uh, a successful test as far as I know. Um, of course we are here for the market so we will jump right in here with Plex right away and there we go. Uh, they're back to uh, 1.205 billion ISK and 45 seconds for that one so we're actually already back up a little bit um, I have to be honest I don't know the exact state of the sale at the moment uh, or is Plex still discounted um, probably not considering that that we're already heading back up and that we broke 1.2 billion again um, but of course there could be more sales uh, as the holiday season comes along so it's going to be interesting to see where Plex uh, will go from here you can also see some hesitation at the tail end uh, where we're actually staying underneath the 20 day moving average. So I think it's all going to depend on the sales. Um, if if uh, the fact that we stopped declining this rapidly just means that a sale is over, but there's still a bit of a backlog of uh, plagues that, that are on the market, then it is possible that, that we could stay uh, around the 1.2 billion mark for a few more days and if they didn't announce another plex we could go uh, or start to go lower so it's going to be pretty interesting um, if ccp can basically uh, keep the price of plex in check with uh, with doing sales over the holidays um, or if we're going to see the uh, the speculative bubble in plex that i'm personally expecting uh, before the next expansion but it is of course possible that that bubble will only start to form uh, like in the new year because we should still have a few months uh, in the new year before the citadel release actually launches so we'll have to wait and see maybe the uh, multiple pilot training certificate can give us a little bit of a hint and that is actually interesting so you can see the same downtrend and then the recovery uh, from the latest sale but we are already back at 1.25 billion we're back above the 20-day moving average as well and so the uh, multiple pilot training certificate indicates uh, possibly uh, higher plex prices or plex at least crossing the 20 day moving average one thing to note though there is some hesitation right at the tail end here so it's going to be interesting uh, i think uh, in the upcoming weeks next up we've got the pilot's body resculpt which is doing its own thing i'm, I'm really happy actually to see this confirmed now uh, because it's staying well below the 20 day moving average and it is decreasing in price a little bit more breaking the 260 million price mark so Okay, Plex recovered a little bit from the sale. Um, the question is, is this going to start going back up or are future sales uh, that will undoubtedly come with the holidays uh, going to keep the price of Plex in check? We'll have to wait and see. Next up, we'll uh, check on some minerals, 335. And as always, we'll start with the cheapest one, which is Tritanium. Um, there was again some hesitation last week, so you could see that at first, Plex rose up quite sharply to 6.20. Uh, it had to pull back a little bit uh, from the market. Then we went back up to 640. We had to pull back to 620 again. But you can see that the data points are indicating that we're going to cross the 20 day moving average once again. And the sellers are at 644, buyers at 622. Um, so it looks like Tritanium might still have a little bit of leg room. Um, Let's take a look at some of the uh, supply demand here. 1.3 billion, that's a decent sell order, all, uh, which is actually decently old already. There's only one really new order here that is trying to compete. So it looks like there is still a bit of a buyout of Tritanium happening even on the seller side. When it comes to the buyers, we do have a billion being bought here for 620. Then um, we have to go another bit down here a bit, another billion for 611 and another billion for 609. Um, so there is still, I would say, stronger demand than supply. And I actually think that Tritanium could reach 6.5 um, pretty, pretty soon. Uh, I think it's in the cards considering how old all of these uh, sell orders are. 
Um, I was, I was at first. I was thinking maybe we're finally finding our range. You know, six two to six four, start moving in between that. But if I look at the demand, if I look at how old all these orders are, I'm gonna say no. We're actually going to go towards six fifty, um, because that's only this one big order, and then a few smaller ones which have been on the market for quite a while. Um, and uh, thus, yeah, how high will Tritanium be? I don't know, but I expect it to go higher and to definitely reach 6.5 at some point. Let's see what Pyrite's been doing then. Recovering as well, which uh, basically supports my theory because uh, Pyrite was dropping quite substantially to 11.10 last week, but we're back up to 11.50. Let's see where the sellers at 11.55, buyers 11.45. They obviously had to follow suit. They had no choice um, on the volume size though look at that 758 million 257 million 350 million although two of them are older orders you only have one of them that is pretty recent um i'm seeing again a buyout that is happening on the on the sellers but um, i'm also seeing much bigger volumes compared to the buy orders so I would say that it is in the cards for uh, Pyrite to not increase in price that much. And there must just be like a much higher supply of Pyrite coming in compared to the Tritanium, um, which I think is going to start to be interesting for miners to look at. Is it interesting to start mining just Veldspar because you get more Tritanium for, for that? Or is it still okay to mine the combination ores? Uh, I think you'll have to do the math on that. but. Considering the volumes here for buy rights, which are still way higher than on the buy order side, um, I would I would look into it because Tritanium is definitely looking like uh, like it's going to be the winner here for now. Uh, let's take a look at Mixalon. Um, okay, really interesting. Uh, Mixalon, of course, was slowly going down towards the 60 price mark, but right here at the tail end you can see the five day moving average shooting up a little bit a data point well above the 20 day moving average um, let's see what the prices are sellers are at 63.20 uh, you've got some new orders in the volume range of maybe 40 to 50 million yeah something in between that um, on the buyer side here you've got uh, quite a few recent orders in the volume range of 16, 10, 12, pretty much equal. Uh, so I would say that Mixalon actually looks like it's in a healthier situation to start moving sideways. Um, you've got decent supply here, uh, at least several sell orders are coming in at least. Uh, you've got decent demand that looks pretty equal in volume. And so I would say uh, the price is bound to stay above 60 ISK. But I don't think we'll see another breakout towards 65, 70, something like that. So I would say Mixal looks like it could be stable. Pyrite has some, some, uh, some volume pressure on the sell order side. Tritanium is set to increase in price, I think. Next up here, we've got Isogen. Um, that looks pretty interesting as well, I think. Uh, we had a pretty sharp downturn here. Uh, downturn, uh, breaking 115, going above that, hesitating again. Um, but apparently at the tail end going back up once again as well 118 for the sellers 114 for the buyers so again i think we'll have to look at the volumes to get an idea and here you can see half the front page is less than 24 hours old uh, a big order of 43 million which is way bigger than anything you're seeing uh, on the front page at least of the uh, buyers so i would say there is again pressure on the isogen market uh, I would not say it's as high as what I'm seeing with Pyrite, but there's a little bit of that. And so it's going to continue to hesitate, bounce on or around the 115 price mark. But it's set to at least uh, start to move sideways, which I'm actually seeing on all of them except for Tritanium. And so we'll have to see, you know, the, the sell order data here does indicate an increase in price to me, but I could be wrong considering uh, what all of the other ones are doing so uh, maybe yeah again for uh, the miners out there especially in high sec uh, i would say do the math on uh, just the veldspar compared to all of the other ores um, because tritanium is, is apparently i think in an interesting position compared to the others next up we've got noxium um, that's okay uh, it's actually it okay in the sense that it's not at the bottom anymore of 470 um, but it did go back down breaking the 500 price uh, mark once again hesitating to break 490 
so it bounced back uh, up from that. I think again we'll have to go and take a look at supply demand. Uh, the recent orders, uh, let me see here, a little bit scattered. We've got 5 million units here uh, for 500. Then here we've got a few smaller orders and an older one at 494 of 5.5 million units on the buyer side. Um, not that much again here, 2 million, 2.8 million. So a slight edge to supply. Um, again, which I, I think puts uh, Noxium in the same situation as like Pyrite and Isogen, where you do have more supply, uh, but the prices are so ridiculously low that you uh, probably have like some buyouts now and then, which uh, increase the price, but it always gets pushed back uh, by the uh, too high supply um, that's, that's coming in. And you, you can see that on the volumes for the sell orders compared to the volumes on the buy orders. Although here, you do have one of 13 uh, million units, um, but yeah, 474 ISK is quite a bit lower on the chart here. That's really trying to pick up some Noxium on the cheap here, uh, and, and someone was willing to spend quite a bit of money trying to get that, gambling that it will go lower. But at the moment, I'm seeing some hesitation um, in these high minerals or minerals that can be mined from high Noxium is a little bit different. Um, and I would say most of them look like they're going to start moving sideways, like they've actually found their price ranges, except for Tritanium. Now, uh, you may have seen it on the ticker below, but make a site, that's not good news. Look at that. Um, still going down now having halved in price from its top it's reaching uh, 1100 is and that is really some serious pressure and despite that i would say we still have half a front page of new sell orders you have them below 1 million though but look on the buyers here uh, a million units a million units it's still pretty even so where will mega site settle uh, the one scenario that i thought was dangerous it did just happen uh, it crossed 1300 and then yeah look out below how low was it going to go those were i think my exact words and uh, yeah it just crashed way down to 1100 so um the, these nasic minerals are being overmined overproduced and they've lost half the uh, value that they had almost six months ago uh, which pretty much all of it was due to a, a mineral rebalance but look at that we came from 800 and now we're at 1100 already that's just a 300 uh, is increase less than 50 percent uh, that's a, a serious punishment for anyone that decided to invest on these at this high point which was of course pretty risky um, let's take a look at Zydrine as well, which I was expecting to be similar. The similarity is that it did just break 1000 and uh, it tried to bounce back on the 950 price mark, has done so successfully, but I think we are below 1000 um, for, for Zydrine and, and that that's gonna stay. So uh, they're trying, but uh, they're trying, there's some orders just above that, but uh, it is coming in. You've got new sell orders of around a million units or half a million units and that do dump their Zydrine for 999, 997, etc. Wanting to be certain that they'll be able to uh, to sell um, their Zydrine stocks. And so if I go for the one year chart here again, um, that's actually still okay. We've uh, come from 400, top at 1600 and now we're settling below 1000 so that's still uh, around 50 percent retraced a little less than that um which is interesting uh man um which is interesting maybe um the the increased need for zydrine uh, was a bit more than for megasite and so uh, zydrine can sustain a more than 50 percent increase in price from uh like uh, a year ago uh, whereas Megasite probably cannot. But uh, yeah, that's definitely uh, pretty good, I think. You can pick up Megasite close to 1000 ISK, whereas uh, we've had a top of 2400 ISK, 2200 um, for, uh, for, for a little bit here. So for the, the manufacturers, I think that that's actually pretty good news. Uh, I'll touch on Morphite, but I don't think there's anything too dramatic to report there. Staying above the 11,000 ISK price mark, um, trying to toy with it here once again, but I think it's robust enough uh, to, uh, to stay above that. I don't think it's in such a major oversupply situation. Although, one thing to note here, 
all of these less than 24 hours old still less than 24 hours old so at least one and a half pages of fresh orders coming in um, battling it out trying to sell them uh, so this is putting some pressure on the price uh, but there is still a little bit of, of range to go before 11,000 is so I think uh, that uh, Morphine is going to be able to stay above that. Could be interesting if it breaks it though. That could be uh, something that would turn things around quite substantially. All right, after these minerals, let's take a look at some Tequan chips, 1530. And uh, we'll start at the top here. Here's the Armageddon slowly going up towards 210 on the one year chart. Uh, the one year chart could be interesting. Uh, it's been a while since I've run it. Uh, this is six month chart. You can see. Uh, some more variety you can also see uh, that um, the, the difference is a bit lower though from 200 million to 208 million sure it's an increase in price but it's not that drastic let's go for the one year chart and uh, let's maybe quickly take one mineral and around April is where we had the mineral rebalance. Let's try to keep that in mind here. So around April, yeah, you can see before that we had uh, Armageddon's 180, something like that. April comes in and we start to increase in price to 200. And since then we've basically gone from 200 to 210, uh, slowly uh, going up in price. This could be monetary inflation talking. It uh, could be, um, that the armageddon is just a powerful meta at the moment or something like that we'll have to take a look at the other ones but what you can see is a slight increase in price here um, or slight well from 180 to 200 million due uh, to the mineral rebalance uh, what i'm starting to think now is what will the impact of the really major retracing of the nozick minerals be uh, in the longer term um, because it's been going on for a while but uh, we, we still see stable, slowly increasing prices for the Armageddon. Maybe the other ships will give us a better idea. Here's the Caracal, starting at 10.5 million, ending at, um, well, close below 11.5 million. So less than a million increase over one year. That would indicate maybe that's just in line with, with ISK inflation, something like that. What I do see here is a big increase in price uh, at around april 1st all of a sudden um, and then you slowly see the the bottom of the prices go up until like august where we actually get a big retracing again uh, playing with the bottom of 10.5 million once again um, and here at the tail end we're actually going down so i think the caracal it's a cruiser it's easier to make um, it's gonna move more quickly in the market as well because it's very popular and so Maybe here at the tail end, we are starting to see the pressure uh, on the price due to the uh, lower cost of the Nelsic minerals. And that's what, I, what I, I would like to see personally. If we could actually retrace back some of that, and maybe end up with a, a, a lower increase in price on a one year basis across the board. I think that that could be okay for the market. Uh, a slight increase is to be expected because uh, monetary inflation is basically the name of the game in any uh, virtual economy. Next up here, we've got the Dominics. Um, again, some volatility to be spotted around April. Uh, the one weird thing is we actually see a decrease in price back to its uh, price point a year ago at uh, after the uh, mineral rebalance and then we do see that slowly uh, that slow increase in price to above 200 million here uh, so um, i think what could have happened here is the uh, century drone nerf has also hit uh, the dominics as f um, and, and taken it out of the major meta in nelsic alliances decreasing the demand uh, enough uh, so that the price had to actually go back down and now here we just see the natural increase in price due to the increase in cost uh, so no signs of pressure at the tail end uh, i would say just yet um, for the lower nozick uh, minerals of course dominix is a battleship so i would expect that to come in later here's the drake then um, okay pretty pretty clear chart uh, up until april 1st Thank you CCP for warning me. Uh, up until April 1st, um, pretty stable around 48 million. And now you can see the increase in price up to 56 million uh, due, I think, in part to uh, the Drake coming back a little bit, the drone meta being pushed back. Then you've got the natural ISK inflation. And then of course the changes to the minerals will have set this up. And so uh, the Drake may be making a little bit of a comeback in the meta, hopefully. 
um, there has um, CSB also did release some new uh, modules that helped missile ships. So I think that this is a combination of factors why we do see a decent increase in price for the Drake uh, in a more substantial and uh, sustained manner, I would say. Next up here, we've got the Mauler. That's uh, a little bit more stable. It is a cruiser, so the impact of the mineral rebalance will have been much less. Uh, starting at 10 million though, slowly going up here, but no April uh, bounce to report except maybe a slight volatility with a double top above 12 million um, but yeah pretty stable around 11 million that's pretty obvious except for the one big spike uh, which was i would say where was that probably mid-october something like that where there was an obvious move on the tech one market across the board and so you will you will see this spike happen here and there it's here you've got it for the dominics uh, here you've got it for the Drake. So there, there was something that happened here, but I still have not been able to find out what exactly. If we ignore that one spike, we are pretty uh, stable. Maybe, um, yeah, slight inflationary pressure, whereas uh, we used to have periods below 11 million. Now it looks like we'll be just above 11 million in the foreseeable future. Next up, the Myrmidon, um, again, starting at 48 million though but if you take an average before april 52 million is i think where we're what we're looking at a uh, bit of a delayed volatility due to the april changes um, and then we can see here that the bottoms have been increasing uh, from like let's say 52 to 56 million which is less than 10 percent increase um, again mineral rebalance a little bit of inflation i think it's it's normal and still quite okay uh, but i would like to see at some point in like a few months maybe i should definitely do another check on the one year charts and see if the mineral changes uh, the mineral price decrease here will have put some pressure uh, on some of these ships next up here we've got the oracle Ooh, that's actually uh, pretty interesting that we've got a data point up to uh, 105 million here so let's take a quick look at the markets no, okay, they're actually coming back, um, but there must have been a buyout of oracles. That's pretty obvious because all of these are pretty new, except for one at 128 million, uh, but it's already normalizing to 89 million. So we will get a pretty major spike here because of a complete buyout of oracles. Someone came in and said, okay, I'm making an oracle fleet for the Alliance. That's it. And uh, GTA went out of them. Uh, ran out of them um, so again uh, you do see the increase in price here maybe a little bit of a, a bump up here uh, after april and then here now i would say it's the volatility at the tail end makes it, it much harder to read this chart like the others so i would say the oracle maybe um, for some reason becoming part of the meta at the moment um, or maybe it's providence preparing for something i'm sure that uh, they do love the oracles being an awesome mars ship so uh, that volatility here i would say indicates null sick interest in the oracle uh, and uh, yeah keep an eye on that for the meta producing them at the moment uh, on a fully researched bpo must be a good deal i think next up here we've got the raven um starting at 170 uh, april not really seeing anything too drastic around that period it's just at the, uh, here at the end uh, just before october you can see increase in price to 200 million and some retracing here at the tail end we're settling at 190. i actually think that uh, the raven has been out of the limelight for that long that it managed to sustain a more stable price after the mineral changes but seeing as all the battleships did start to go up to a price of around 200 million um, the uh, the tech one market event has pushed the raven up all of a sudden here I, I do think this has been like pretty much a buyout of the tech one market around october and so now the raven is trying to actually hold on to a slightly higher price uh, but just a price that puts it more in line with the other battleships next up here we've got the stabber um, starting at around 10 million 10 to 10.5 range for some time um, and then volatility around April, that's pretty obvious. So maybe some speculation in the Stabber market happened because of the mineral changes. Um, but after that, we went back to some sta stability, um, a little bit higher though, just above 10.5 million. And here at the tail end, we again see quite some volatility. Uh, going from 10.5 to 13.5 million. Okay, that's, that's 2 million. That's definitely more than 10%. That's pretty interesting. Interesting. Uh, this is again the October event on the Tech One market. So 
it has been squashed uh, after a double peak and now we're slowly coming back down let's see where the buyers are at 10.9 million and the sellers 11.5 million so again really in line uh, with with the chart slowly settling down but uh, the stabber market apparently still needs some time uh, because uh, it still seems like like it's maybe vulnerable to a buyout of stabbers uh, where you can see this this big peak right here again happening after the event uh, next up here we've got the tornadoes again um, you can clearly see the october event right here pushing it up to 80 million it tried a second time over here uh, and um, the april yeah maybe here this increase in price at first we were clearly in the 62 to 70 million range let's take a broad range right here uh, after a little time um, the april changes have really pushed it up and we were obviously starting to trade tornadoes above 70 million and then we have the october event where um, we had a buyout up to 80 million and now we're still decently volatile uh, this has, is something that did come back in all of the tier 3 battle cruisers um, i guess they are much newer than most of the other tech one markets fewer people have perfect bpos uh, have the means to just bring them to the market as massively as the other ones they're pretty big as well and if i'm not mistaken they've been hit harder as well by the increased need of mega site and side drying so i think that's why we're seeing this pattern of uh, the, these guys uh, increasing in price substantially uh, from 64 to 78 million is, is definitely a, a pretty big increase in price and we're still seeing volatility in them because the volumes just aren't there next up we've got the typhoon I would uh, say that this one is very similar to uh, the Drake, uh, not uh, a ship that is, I think, uh, that much in the limelight. Uh, it used to be Dominic's with sentries, you know, you know that that was a meta. I think that the Armageddon is just a straight up really good ship with uh, missiles and drones. Um, and so I think that that's why the uh, Galente and the Amar um, battleships have been the more popular, uh, whereas the Minmatar and the Kaldari have uh, suffered. And so the bigger the ship then uh, the harder the impact so we start at like 160 for a typhoon uh, a little bit of volatility in the run-up to april going up to almost 180 uh, then again managing to maintain its price for quite a while um, just because there's like probably lower interest in the typhoon than than the other battleships but then the october event happened again a buyout of most of the tech one market i mean you could go back and, and look at uh, the uh, the Eve talks around that period. Uh, I just came back all of a sudden a week and the take one market was empty. Uh, you would go for uh, for sellers and you had maybe like 10, 10 typhoons on the market or something like that. It was just a crazy thing that happened. Not sure exactly what it was, but it did push uh, the typhoon back in line towards 195 million in line with the other battleships. And so I think that that's why people are uh, accepting this price much more easily. They're seeing, okay, how much do I have to pay for an Armageddon? 210 million, how much for a Dominix? Uh, also 200, 205 million, well, I want to just do some missions in a paddleship. Here's a Typhoon 185. Uh, that's definitely a good deal compared to all of the other ones. I think that, that this is what's maintaining uh, the price uh, of the Typhoon and the Drake at the moment. And then finally, we've got the Vexor here starting at... Oops. I accidentally press show info starting at 11 million settling at 10 point uh, 11 point5 million also breaking this one down and again uh, I think the Vixor is a perfect example of the last year in take one ships you've got stability 11 to 11 point5 million then you've got April you've got volatility due to the mineral changes you know the uh, the big spike in Zydrine and in Megaside must have had an impact right here. Um, but the Vexor, uh, it's a cruiser, so the impact in general will have been a bit smaller, easier to plug the gap as well. So we stayed in this price range and then again the October event happened right here. Complete buyout of the market jumped up to 13 million and now we're slowly settling this back down and uh, starting to find our new normal price uh, whereas yeah 11 to 11.5 million again natural isk inflation i think could um, could account for most of that increase in price and and you do see the pressure right here on the decrease the one thing that i couldn't exactly tell you is maybe meta changes over the course of this except for a nerf uh, on, on like sentry drones which really doesn't hit the vexor that's maybe only visible on the dominics here the decrease in price despite the volatility must have been a change in the meta 
for the Dominics. But yeah, pretty interesting to go back and look at uh, Tech 1 chips over the course of the last year or so. Uh, let's move on to take two at 30 minutes. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be a, a pretty long one uh, But the uh, spur of the moment idea to go for a one-year chart on take one means that I've got a bit more analysis to make so take two Let's just straight up go back to six month chart look for some volatility and some trade potential Basilisk not too good. You can clearly see that the volatility has decreased if you take all the tops and draw a line Take all the bottoms draw a line. We're settling at 185 and uh, That's it. So I would say the basilisk has shown volatility in the last six months though So if you're looking for like a medium to long-term possibility then sure why not you could actually try and pick some up on a cheap buy order because everything is settling down and it's pretty obvious that this is where we're settling at around the 185 price mark um, but it's it's a gamble because the volatility has been decreasing in the last months next up here we've got Cerberus that's a little bit different I would say you can see that the volatility passed we've had a decrease a final jump up to 210 from 190 to 210 that's more than 10 percent you can make some trade on that but now here we are going extremely low we are at a six month low so I would say it uh, I, would, I would rather gamble on Cerberus at the moment than on the Basilisk. You're buying them for close to 170 million, which is right here on the chart. If you look at the rest uh, of the last six months or so, if you can sell them for 220 or uh, 230 and uh, buying them from 170, that's a really nice profit. Cerberus, interesting one if you have some ISK lying around. Here's the Guardian then. Um, Okay, I would say it's pretty obvious that a bottom is uh, triggered when it breaks 130. When it, it does break 130, you start to see some volatility, uh, but not super volatile. This one big spike up to 165 is an awesome opportunity though. And here we have a recent one up to 145. So yeah, decent, uh, decent um, uh, volatility for the Guardian. Not that great, honestly, two, two opportunities in the last six months. Um, and here we are working on the next one. So I think you're too late to buy them. Um, they're actually selling for 133 at the moment, which is yeah right here on the chart. So, um, but keep keep an eye on this one. I would make a move on it though. Next up here we've got the Hound. Um, also, this is pretty similar to the Basilisk chart, where you can see the bottoms going up, up and up. You can see the uh, tops going down right here in the second half of the chart uh, the interesting thing is that we've broken 17 million um, but unless the buyers are well below 16 they're still at 16.5 I don't think this is interesting you can see that the, the real bottom that started some volatility was below 16 million so too early I would say next up here we've got the Ishtar um, Ishtar, a bit of a, a tougher one because it has been nerfed substantially. So going from 175, here a bottom close to 150. That was pretty interesting. Then some volatility again, double, double jump up to 175, going down to 155. And now again here, jump up to 170. So um, a sell opportunity just passed. You can still sell them for 165 to 170 pretty easily. Um, so this is okay actually the Ishtar showing some volatility if you want to play around with it this one could be quite okay considering that it just knew a spike um, the Manticore next that's just way too stable don't like it again I, I really don't like it one spike in six months where you had a decent opportunity to sell for some profit uh, but just way too stable so no don't like it next up here we've got the Nemesis um, this is pretty interesting you've got a, a nice double spike up to 22 million here you went up to 20 million here then you dropped out to 17 and a half you had a slight opportunity right here as well and now we're again um, at the low point for six months so nemesis yeah maybe uh, as, as a bit of a more of a medium term investment i think this one is starting to be pretty interesting here is the Oniros next. Um, it's good to see volatility in the second half of the chart. Uh, two spikes up to 175 with bottoms 140 and 145. There's some trade money to be made there. What I don't like is that we are starting to see the bottoms go up here. Um, so that's a bit dangerous. But if you can't uh, buy them probably in the 140 to 145 range, I think you're doing a really good deal considering the, the volatility in the last few months here. Next up, we've got the Purifier. Again, one big spike right here in September. That's it. And uh, we're just too stable. Nope, don't like it. I definitely prefer the, the Nemesis on a six-month low then compared to, uh, to what the Purifier is doing right here. 
Uh, next up here we've got the scimitar again logistics cruisers they've shown some volatility and a very nice spike here at the tail end um, so bottom trigger look for purchasing them below 130 i think you're definitely doing a good deal although it is not the bottom for the for six months just yet uh, i think if you look here start a volatility right at touching 130 three little spikes right here with sell opportunities at 150 155 and then 150 again something like that uh, that's okay 25 to 30 million on, on on a purchase of 130 and then here again uh, going down touching 130 and then a nice spike up to 160 that's definitely some good money that can be made there and then here again uh, going down so yeah scimitar keep an eye on that one i think you could make some trade money on that um, not even medium term maybe uh, even short term and then the vengeance again really don't like it uh too stable it tried twice maybe here this one spike is interesting but it's only from 19 to 22 million and uh, yeah we're just smack in the middle of the entire chart here so yeah again i don't really like it uh, so that's my look at the tick two market for some trade opportunities i'm really only seeing a couple of investment opportunities where we are clearly at a six month low uh, and if I'm, I'm looking for volatility, it looks like the logistics cruisers are where it's at at the moment, which is in line, if now that I think about it, to like my uh, thoughts um, with the uh, sovereignty changes, with the entosising, where you had to basically start to spread your fleets out in order to... Uh, to start uh, taking uh, space and, and regions and stations, which I think would have put volatility back into the logistics cruisers because there's gonna be way higher need for them. And it looks like I'm actually right on that. Next up here, we've got the tech tree market, um, 33, 45. Um, yeah, interestingly enough, the tactical destroyers uh, on the six month chart here, clearly going up, the confessor dropping back down. Um, so 58 million decent supply look at that all of that less than 24 hours old i think uh, that uh, the gap has been plugged on this one pressure is on and so that's uh, not too good i thought i'd spotted an opportunity last week but i'm not sure uh, which one it was i think the jackdaw uh, so here is the hecate uh, decent supply as well pretty much an entire front page so pressure on the price is happening here at the moment Next up here we've got the Jackdaw, looks like a spike did happen, was it in the last week, hard to say, let's go for one month, yep, obviously, from 22nd of November, really a big spike up here, um, so that was probably last week, and has the gap been plugged, yes, but not that convincingly I would say, you do have a lot of them coming in the last 24 hours, and uh, the day before that as well, and uh, so obviously the spike caused a reaction but we're actually s settling close to 60 million here at the moment for the jackdaw so don't expect a complete pullback on this one and then finally we'll take a look at this vapor here this one should have some pressure on it uh, heading towards 55 million and so yeah obviously look at that 45 12 1, 116 240 all of those less than 24 hours old uh, this vapor is um uh, has pressure on it due to supply uh, but all of them across the board are now in strong supply there's there's a decent amount of them coming in in the last 24 hours so i don't expect a major price spike on any of them here's the tengu then um did a nice jump up to 200 obviously uh, so a gap like that is being plugged quite substantially and now we're heading back towards 180 190 for the sellers 175 for the buyers supply wise okay half a page uh, of new Tengus coming in. Um, it's not that much, but it's quite okay. Um, so 10, yeah, that's looking all right. Uh, but I do think that the Tengu is going to settle before reaching 180. Um, next up, we've got the Proteus then. Uh, big spike up to 250. That was last week. And obviously the counter movement happened as well. Um, so again, an entire front page of new Protei being dropped here well supplied let's take a look at the loki next there was yeah uh, was it the loki i mean i'll have to go back but there was one tick tree ship where i said okay if the next spike is gonna happen it's probably here because i think there was like nothing too new and it could be the loki i'll have to check on that uh, but it did materialize at least for the loki 
went up to 210 for the sellers here at the moment clearly a pre pretty big price spike uh, we did go as low as 170 not that long ago so that's decent trade money um, if you actually uh, manage to do this and then uh, finally we've got the legion here and still working its way up so i think this was last week clearly a move up from 160 to 200 million pressure was on but actually managed to go back up here but look at that that's uh, being squashed as well so all of them all of the tech tree ships actually have almost a front page of new ships less than 24 hours old um it could be that production has ramped up. It could also be that someone decided uh, they're going to start dumping them, their stocks, which they've been maybe been using uh, to try and influence the price of these ships with big buyouts and then slowly dropping them back, trying to sell them at a profit. Um, what exactly is happening, I don't know, but it does mean that certainly for the cruisers, I would say um, there is some potential in making good trades on these at the moment if this volatility keeps up of course the one thing that i'm seeing now that i've not seen in the last few months is i'm seeing pretty much a front page of a new uh, new ships less than 24 hours old on the seller side that's something that we've not seen in quite a while so be careful I'm, I'm now calling slight trade opportunities i've seen them in the last few weeks and months but and uh, this could be an indication that that it's actually going to start to stabilize once again we'll have to wait and see and then finally for the extra products uh 4120 um, i'm going to just take uh a very quick one because this is already a pretty long episode let's take a look at the gecko right here uh, so the carrier changes caused this one to decrease in price substantially um, but well, looks like it's slowly starting to come back so uh, right here we had a big run up to 120 then ccp said okay carriers are no longer going to be able to use uh, drones after the citadel release and yeah that that obviously caused uh, the demand for geckos to drop quite substantially um, but here at the tail end uh, five day moving average crossing 20 day moving average uh, the one truth about the gecko is there's never going to be more of them in the game than there are now at least unless uh, ccp decides that uh, they are going to uh, provide people with new geckos uh, so uh, that that is still the gamble that you're pl you're taking um, but i would say if you're looking for something that at the moment looks like it's certain to just increase in value it would be geckos and uh, it looks like we've actually touched the bottom here uh, at below 80 buyers are at 78 and sellers are at around 80. Um, so this is something for your consideration it's obviously uh, been uh, a really good investment early on here so look at that you start at 30 million and then you could have sold them above 100 million tripling in price over like eight months or so then we had a, a decent pullback but again the gecko is a unique item that's not producible in the game at the moment and so it could be a really good investment to try and store some value um, so yeah gecko really interesting one reaching its bottom that's going to be it for this eve talk then guys thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all next time